Welcome to Learn and Flutter. And in today's video, what are we going to do is we're going to write a simple application and see how to use the image widget. Now, I'm showing you here some of the images that I like to display in this application. And I'm going to show you some of the problems that we're going to run into when we try to display this many images without some auto widgets. Those other widgets are to come. Remember, we're doing this step by step and we're learning the basics. So first of all, I got these images from here and I'll show you the link. It's um, archive.blender.org feature that um, gallery forward slash gallery. And basically, I just wanted to get some royalty free images that I don't have to worry about. And Blender's open source tool and people who upload these images here um, usually just put them there for people to see what the tool can do and so on. So you can or you can or should be able to just um, there's no royalty information that I see that require you to purchase it. You can like download it and so on. So um, it's free to use. And so anyway, um, or you can just search Google for auto royalty free images and use those. But anyway, that's where I got my images and I got 10 of them. Okay, so we're doing Flutter Basics. And so if you go to the Flutter website and then you go to Docs and then Widgets, widgets Catalog, and we're doing the basic widgets. So far within the basic set of widgets, we've covered column. We've seen how to use row, um, row widget, there it is. Uh, we've seen how to use the container widget and we've used the text widget before. Um, we haven't used like the raise button or any of the other guys, but I figured out oh, we can go, jump to the image um, widget at this time. Now, using the image widget is fairly easy and it sort of um, connects with how we played song the last time when we had asset that we defined and then we used those assets. So you can see for an image, you can get an image from an image provider, from an asset, which is what we're going to do today, over the network, which is not very different. It's just presenting it, presenting it with a URL. You can see there. Um, you can get it from file or in memory. Okay. And so there are a number of ways you can display it. And there's an example of using... Um, uh, image from the network. All right, so if we scroll down a little bit, um, actually, if you go back up and you click asset, and then you scroll down, um, basically tells you how to set up that in the assets in Flutter. And they have things that you can set it up with um, different scaling and all that stuff. We're not going to worry about that. And notice the images here have the same name, but because they're in this subdirectory that sort of hint at how they should be scaled, depending on how you use it on which device, it would automatically pick the right image. So let's get started. Um, so here we are in Flutter Basics. I do LS, and if you remember, we left off with our xylophone application. By the way, um, the last time when I left this application, because my computer was having all those issues, it wasn't playing properly, but I've since confirmed that how once I build it, rebuild it, and run it on the device, it all the keys work correctly with the different songs. So if that did not work for you, please let me know, or at least please retry it. But it worked for me, I didn't have to make any changes. Um, the problem I was seeing was specifically because I had all that stuff installed to try and figure out what was going on with my computer at the time. All right, so let's do this. And so I'll sort of cheat and create a directory this way. I'll say call it part seven. And this time I'll actually put image in there to let us know that how we were using the image widget in part seven. The other ones I should have done the same thing because now I don't know which one of these we covered like the row and container, but oh well, bygones be bygones. So I'll CD into the um, part seven directory. And this directory is empty, of course, but we know that we can type flutter, create, flutter, create, and then we can give it um, that. And what it tells us, that means current directory, is we tell him Flutter to create a project in the current directory. And the trick there is that if you ever delete anything from your directory, like some of these files got del deleted, you can reuse the same command and Flutter is going to see the difference and recreate them. So in this example, what it's doing is actually looking in the directory and seeing that though there's nothing there and it actually creating all the files. So that's really what's going on. Since I set up back my computer, I did not worry including um, installing the Android toolchain at this time. It's okay if you don't develop for Android or you don't want Android at this time. Um, but you can see I have a check mark for everything else. And so 
um, that's good. So we can um, do Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code Editor, get that going. And so I have my simulator peeking out to the side there. I'll leave it that way until we're ready to run things. As usual, we always start with the main, that Dart file. And so um, today I'll go and let's just delete this line over. We don't need to comment. And then instead of using a material app, which is what we're going to get to very soon, um, I'm going to come down here and just sort of delete everything. And well, where is that now? So there we are. And I'm going to say, I just want to return a container. Okay. So that's that. Um, as we know that uh, for a container, we can pass a color. And so we can say colors, for example, blue, um, you know, and that works. Or we can actually pass a decoration um, as an alternative. So you can say decoration and we can say box decoration. And then for a box decoration, we can pass the color here. So we can say colors that blue, for example, still our blue color. And um, this works just fine. And let's just um, build it and run it. We've seen this before. So um, that's going to connect to my simulator there, the iPhone um, 11 Pro Max, which is what that's simulating. Um, we also know that uh, we can do like border radius. And we can see border radius, um, B-U-R-D, yeah, border radius, R-A-D. Uh, border radius um, that's circular for example and we can give it a radius and so I can do like 16 for example and you know that's one thing that we can do and we're not gonna see this because remember with container that this funny thing that um, depending on if it's inside of something that size it um, if you even if you specify the size we play with it and we saw all of that stuff that even if you give it a size if we, if we give it a width it wouldn't respect it because it's not in a container that actually enforces a size. But then if it doesn't have a width or any children and it's in a container with a size, then it shrinks. So there's all these confusing things because a container can be a size box and a whole bunch of other things. But anyway, we got our blue background there. Okay. Um, we can, of course, wrap our container into you know, in a row, for example. And so, for example, we can say we have a row widget. And of course, this is going to complain now. And you can see it how it's saying that oh, it basically doesn't, it needs a layout. It doesn't know which direction it should go. And so, I mean, if you scroll back up, you'll see it says it doesn't have a direction. So, on our row widget here, we can say text direction and tell it that oh, we want to go left to right, for example. Or we can also set major axis alignment. And we can say space or wrong, for example. All right, so, um, but no, our container is still not going to show up because, um, well, let me bring this back down. What am I doing? All right, still not going to show up because it doesn't have any width or size. And so it sort of doesn't have any child to size itself to. So we can sort of fix that very easily by saying that oh, we have a width of maybe 100, for example. Um, and then, you know, some sort of height or something. And so you can see now it shows up. All right, so that's fine and dandy. Um, and we could put multiple containers if we like. Um, and so we have something like this. And so we have two co containers and this one could be red, for example. And so there's our two containers size evenly and with that width. Okay, but we're not talking about containers. We're talking about images. So, why don't we create our own widget to wrap a um, that returns an image? So we can say stateless widget. And so I'll call it my image, for example. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to be able to pass the name of the, the asset name, a string, just like we did when we created our xylophone, to my image widget here and have it then return an image. So what I'm imagining is something like this. I'll have final I'll have string name, which is the name of the asset. And so I'll make this a, a constructor here that takes a name argument. So this, that name, for example, and then something like this. And then here, instead of returning a container, I return an image. So how do we create an image? Well, we sort of saw that 
saw how to do that just now. If we go back here, we will see it. So it says image that asset. And then, so is this constructor function that we call on the image um, widget or the widget class uh, on this image class. And then it would create and return a image widget for us. So um, that makes it a whole lot easier. And so we need um, some assets. So, but we know that the asset name is going to be, oh, so we have to say this, that asset and the name here. Okay, great. So that works just fine. Of course, we can't use this just yet because we don't, we haven't declared or defined our assets. So the way I like doing my asset is putting it parallel or um, as in the subdirectory of the project. So alongside of pop spec. So I will create a new folder and I'll call it assets. You can use it anything you want. ACC assets, okay, um, assets. And then um, within here, I like creating subdirectories for music and video and images and so on. And so essentially I'll do the same thing. And so I'll just drag these files and drop them in this directory above. So let me create a directory, here, another folder, subfolder. And you don't have to do it this way. I just like doing that way to sort of separate things. So I'll drag these guys and put them here. You can see they just drop in here. Now, when I save them from the website, I call them image one, two, three, four, etc., etc., to make it easier for me to just access them. So now that we have our images there, remember we have to do one more thing, and that is to go to our pop spec file and scroll down to here where we have assets, and we're gonna define our assets. I will pull this down uh, just to take out the comment. And so if you look at this, when I uncomment, you can see that it gives me a yellow error message here, or warning rather, and it tells me that oh, this asset is not defined. That's because relative to this pop spec file, it's looking for an image directory with these images. So even if I change this to image onejpg it would still give me a warning because I do not have an images directory that is parallel to this pop spec. What I have is a asset, assets directory like this. And so you can sort of never go wrong if you pay attention to um, this. So let's make sure that I have this uh, assets. I spell this incorrectly up here. So let's fix that. And so uh, once it's saved, we should see that how um, it should come back and tell me how it's correct now. All right, so that's gonna happen. So let me do this. Let me force it to update by creating asset two. And okay, yeah, the message went away from both of them. So now I can go ahead and I'll just um, create the other assets one through 10. So now we have um, all our assets and we don't see that yellow warning. Now we can go back to our main that dart here and we already sort of wrote a simple widget and so let's now see if we can use it so um, the idea would be to see if we can add an image to our row here and so let's do this my image and we'll do asset that slash images slash image one that jpg for example and let's save and see if this thing no um using a row is probably not the best thing but let's see what it display like um so we're getting a so this is a container okay so all right so i don't like that okay too many position oh that's because we have a name parameter so um yep we can have a position oh there we go and we can see now this yellow thing just means that oh there's some clipping or images clip as we can see and so we can change this from a row to a column and for the column i don't believe we need text direction only when we're using text on a row we need text direction and so column is pretty straightforward and there we go there's our image being displayed very easily and so we can get rid of this guy and 
now we can duplicate this line so let's do um, to get our second image here on the screen and there we go look at that two images very easy this is was so easy to display now the thing is the problem here though as you can already see is that as I start adding more images so let me add a few more as I start adding images you'll see they'll get eventually too small to display on the screen all right and so well it's been clipped there but uh, what we can do is wrap around our images expanded and so expanded is a widget and there we go um, as you can see my image is already pretty um, small and then if I do the remaining four um, it's not going to look so nice after all okay um, okay I messed this up again seven eight nine and ten and so I'll save that and this is what I was talking about look at all our images very small doesn't display properly now you can imagine that we can do something like say oh well for the ones that are sort of tall like image number two and this is looks like it's seven um this is eight nine and ten so um two seven um nine and ten we could probably put them in a row and put two of them per row so for example we can say that our column actually has a row as a child and this row has children of course and one of the child for this row is what we said two and seven so we can do something like that and let's save this and so now um, if we look at the debug output we are having that error again about the layout direction it doesn't know which direction since we're doing horizontally it doesn't know how to layout so we need a text layout for our row um, that text direction so we're gonna say text direction and we'll say left or right in my case we save this and now you can see that looks a little bit better right we have those two images there and then for the last row we can do the same thing we can say we have a row and let's put a comment there and then not there uh, but rather here and then children and then we have these two and now i can bring those down into the row and so we should expect this to show up hopefully a little better um, but you start seeing problems with it being laid out and oh we have the same problem here we need to say that oh this has text direction and left to right and now this looks a little bit better at least for those tall images but you can see those other guys are still squeezed in there and we have this one image that's really wide it looks like it should be on a row by itself so which one is that so um, this look like um, this is the dog this is one two three so this is image number four look like it should be in a row by itself now I hope you get what I'm going with this it's just too much work to do this layout um, this way and so that was image number four and so and of course we forgot this have to have text direction again and so there we go and so we save this and we're getting so much better at doing this but we still have our dog is squeezed in there and some other images so maybe there's a better widget to be able to lay out images like this and ideally we probably want to be able to can we possibly stack the images show them as a stack and if you swipe the top image of the stack you put it to the bottom or you move it to the side or something like that and you can move through it either as a carousel or just using a stack where you swipe it off it goes to the bottom and then it shows you the next image so maybe we might want to do things like that and there is a stack widget and we're going to look at the stack widget not necessarily next but i sort of want to show you how easy it is to use images but also some of the problems that you could run into when you have images of different sizes and i don't know how many of this problem we can actually address in terms of trying to do proper laying out of all the images there's there are algorithms that would say where's the best place to lay these out so you can do something like a collage but I sort of want to show you the promise but also the problem <laughs> so equal dose anyway um, don't want to make this too long I think it's the 
image widget is very easy to use as you can see how quickly we got up and running with it using image as asset um the other stuff about um the laying out because of the different sizes that's you're gonna have that anywhere you go any, any um sort of application you try to lay out some images so that is not anything unique to flutter so okay hope you um enjoy um, this simple application for laying out some images and maybe you can make it a little bit better by not stacking trying to get 10 of them on the screen at the same time you already know how to do event because we did that in our previous application for says my thing scanning my um desktop my computer but um we already know how to get events so you can so you can wrap your image in a gesture detector and use a block to detect when to send an event every time you touch an image it sends an event to the block to say send me another image and out com coming out of the block would be another um, asset that should be displayed so you can do a few you, there's way to solve this problem right now where you can make it interactive and you don't try to show all the images and maybe you have a count or some offset showing one of ten two of ten and that sort of thing so you can certainly get around this little problem here if you wanted to um, anyway um, there's just some ideas for things you can do to enhance this and make it better I don't want to do all of that I want to keep this nice and simple and then just give you some ideas all right that's it um, I don't want to make this too long but if you would like to see that solution with the block let me know and I can do that in the next video otherwise I'll sort of move on to the next idea the next widget I had in mind and keep this moving um, if you like what you're seeing and you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you can be notified when I post videos. And if you're already subscribed, thumbs up and like the video. And of course, please spread the word if you can. Take care. Bye.